Hi ladies and gents, this is Zlevin with TimeForRPGs.net giving you a basic tutorial on how to use EPSXE for the uh, Windows PC. So first off, for this tutorial you're going to need um, at least four things, most likely three. You're going to actually need the uh, EPSXE file, you're going to need the PlayStation BIOS, either US or um, the PAL version, and you're going to need the plugins for EPSXE. So go ahead and head over to Google and download all that stuff. Either put it on your desktop or my documents, however you want to do that. Um, once you have all that stuff downloaded, you'll see that. So let's see, to start off, go ahead and make a new folder. I'm going to call that folder PSX. Then I'm going to grab all these put them in that folder. Alright, the first thing that you want to do is extract the EPSXE file. I'm using version 1.7 by the way. Um, if your files don't look like mine, with the little books stacked on top of each other, um, you should see a folder that is zipped up. That's uh, the default for um, zip files, in Windows at least. Um, you should be able to just um, I'm sorry, right click it and you'll have an option that says extract all and you should be able to do that for all these files if for some reason you cannot do that then you probably need an extraction utility and as always I actually recommend uh, using 7-zip you can go to Google um, type in 7-zip and uh, download that, it's free and then once you're once you're done installing that then just come back to this so after you extract the very first file you'll see all these extra files pop up go ahead and grab your uh, PSX BIOS and put that in the BIOS folder and then get plugins and put that in the plugins folder then head over to the BIOS folder get rid of that erase me and extract your BIOS into that folder go back then go to plugins you'll see these three files get rid of the remove me keep the GPU file and then extract your plugins if you get the um, replacement file dot um, pop-up then just click yes to all and it'll put everything in that folder for you the documents is uh, very important in this plugins folder it gives you some detailed readmes on how to use each of the plugins, so uh, keep that in mind for future reference. Then you go back to the main directory, and we're going to set up EPSXE. So double click that, and the box that pops up should look like this. Um, when you first start it, you should get a wizard guide tutorial if it doesn't pop up for some reason then go to config and go to wizard guide and you'll see this nice little pop up welcome to the EPSXE config setup um, you can read all that jargon if you'd like let's go to config um, the reason why I told you to put the BIOS and the plugins in is when you get to this this uh, pop up box everything will pretty much be in there so it should have whatever you have set up in those folders already highlighted so you got your bios already the video um, one of the most hated and uh, favorite options of some people actually a good majority of people I actually use the OpenGL driver because um, my computer is pretty good if you have a beastly computer you can actually use the OpenGL2 driver um, yeah that one's pretty advanced it'll slow down your computer if you don't have a good computer if you know your computer's slow then I would either use the PEOPS soft driver or one of the um, PEATS D3D or DirectX 6 D D3D drivers those, uh, those work better for slower computers but I stick to OpenGL so I can record and uh, play the gameplay once you click on that let's just go to config 
when you go to your config options, it's going to look totally different from what I have. Uh, full screen should be checked. I have it in window mode. Texture quality, everything should pretty much say zero. Um, I've set mine up to look a little bit better than normal PSX graphics and it runs pretty good. I don't have any um, complaints. The only thing that you would want to keep in mind is if you're playing specific games. Let's see here. Then you would want to check on this box right here. This has a lot of fixes for uh, very particular games that use special graphics, things of that nature. So if you're having issues with the game, um, not only besides um, modifying your video options, but come in here and make sure you know you have one of these clicked. Like I have the uh, Final Fantasy Battle Cursor clicked, so it actually looks or works correctly. Once you have all your options set up, you'll probably leave it default the first time. Then um, go ahead and click OK. And then go to next. Your sound. This is this is pretty simple. Um, the sound in this doesn't take up too much memory. I actually recommend using the the middle one, Eternal SPU plugin. And you can click on the config if you'd like. The default settings will look exactly like this, just like that, minus uh, all the stuff that I just changed. For smoother playback, if you know your computer can handle it, I'd uh, check SPU Async and leave that on smooth. It um, it plays really good like that. And if you play like a lot of SquareSoft, older SquareSoft games, then click that as well. Then go to next. If you haven't taken the time to make your PS1 games into ISOs like I have, then you're going to want to use this uh, CD-ROM thing. If you're using Windows XP and up, like uh, Windows XP, Vista, then uh, i check the middle option. EPSXE, CDR, WinNT, Win2K Core. That'll work uh, pretty, pretty good for you. If you're using an older version of Windows, which I hope not, then use the top one. And then just go to next. Setting up the uh, the pads. Obviously, you're using controller one, so you click on that, and it'll show you a picture of the old school PS1 controller before they came out with the little joysticks in the middle. Um, this is very very simple. You just click on this, and then hopefully, if you already have your uh, pad plugged in, you just press whatever button you'd like to set up, like up. You change that. Whatever you press on your pad, it'll be that. And actually, if you have a different type of game pad, like let's say you have the one with the dual analog, then you can set all that stuff up. Just keep in mind, uh, certain games, when you start it up, it won't support the dual analog. And I know that if you're using a, a game pad for the PC, it doesn't have that little button in the middle that PlayStation allowed you to turn off the analog so the game would work. So I just keep mine on uh, digital and deal with it. Once you've done once you're done setting all that good stuff up, then just press OK. And then go to next. And that should be it for setting that up. So let's move on to actual gameplay. Let's see here. And that before I even do that, in that PSX folder, hopefully um, you've made a folder called games if you're gonna run off ISO if you're running off CD-ROM don't even worry about this but for those of us who have done that you make the games folder and then just throw all your your games in there however you want to do that alright so let's let's check out how this game looks